I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Bill from Bill's Records. Uh, can we just quickly, if you don't know, even if you don't know, First is you take uh, you take somebody who is you know it's like it's like when you take a piece of paper and a pencil and you just like, draw scribbles and those scribbles get larger and larger and larger and then at one moment you stop and you look at that piece of paper and you go man I was just scribbling but this is beautiful and then you frame it and you keep it forever and every time you look at it you think of that moment when you accidentally stumbled on something that was one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen and, and that's Bill Weisner. That's me, circa 1989, a few years after radio and a few years into nightclubbing. And that's about when I first met Bill Weisner, owner, Bill's Records and Tapes. In today's terms, Bill was the internet. DJs had to find new music somewhere, and because there was no internet back then, we had to dig through crates. Crate digging is what we called it. So we headed for Bill's. Shit, I can just kick back, smoke a fat ass joint. I've been coming to Bill since I was probably 11 years old, old enough to convince my mom to drag my ass up here. <laughs> the rumor is if you're a guy and you're good looking, you get an extra deal. You get a discount on your records. This checks out. Kessler Theater Artistic Director Jeffrey Lyles. When I was a young person, I grew up in far north Dallas, uh, where Bill's first record store was there at Spring Valley in Coy. And it was, uh, needless to say, it was, it was a, a real hangout for people my age who are, who are serious music geeks. Um, we were just talking about um, how the industry has changed. Bill has been around for 30 plus years, uh, which means he has seen the music industry uh, transform and reconfigure into a different thing three or four times over with different formats from, you know, records and there was cassettes and eight tracks and then there were CDs and DVDs and, and all this. He's been there that whole time. And the one, uh, the one thing that really kind of threw him for a loop, I think, was when Napster happened and people started trading music online for free. When they realized uh, that they could get music for free, didn't have to buy it or didn't have to send their money away for an import or something like that, uh, it became different. And the industry itself, the whole retail industry itself, the people that ran record labels, their whole food chain, the record label owners, the retailers, the rack jobbers, all of those people were at a loss at how to adapt to this new thing that was happening, free music. Um, of course, and still to this day, we still haven't figured out how to properly pay artists. Um, you know, the, the, old, the old template for... Um, the way record deals were set up, you know, typically if a record sold for ten dollars, the label got most of the money, the artist got a dollar. Basically, that was that, and that was always bad. It was never fair. Uh, but now it's even crazier. Now that you can get music for free online, the artists are making even less money. And uh, that's one thing about Bills. When you go into Bills, and and he doesn't have prices on the records, <laughs> and you ask him how much something costs, and a lot of times it's really expensive. The reason why is because he wants the artist to get paid. This is Bill worrying about the artist getting paid. I mean, is it okay yeah. to be in the background when it's on YouTube? But for you, music is healing, and, and uh, how um how it is. I mean, I've always I've thought that for a long time. I knew it healed me when I sometimes, lots of times in my life, all I had to do was get, get listen to my music, and I didn't. It can be a sad song, but it takes away the sadness because you have somebody who's sharing it. That's why I say I always love John Lennon. I, I, it, because, well, bring it and well, then I have to say, I always love, but my very favorite is Ben Hart. Mm -hmm. You know, and where have all the people gone? You know, that's what I think. Where have all the people gone? I did it all for, for me and for, the, for, for, for me and for them. I mean, it, it wouldn't have been possible to, to accomplish, to do what I wanted to to do with my life if, it, if there hadn't have been people coming in. You know, it wasn't, I wanted it, I wanted to hopefully, I was doing it for me too because I wanted, I always wanted to, to, uh, to, uh, I think all that really matters, like I maybe told you the other day, is all that really matters is love and friends and stuff like that. But I think music's the thing that, that music is, uh, 
Well, music is just God's language. Like I, I'm not the I'm not the first person, of course, to ever say that. 